Hey there folks, Dark Urge Diaries here, in my first spoken video. I want to start this off with a disclaimer that I'm not endorsing either one of Astarian's paths, and I'm not telling you which one you ought to choose. Some people like to play good, some people like to play evil, some people are chaotic neutral little goblins such as myself who like to experience every path the game has to offer. I'm making this video purely to discuss this cool new type of vampire that's been presented to us. And without further ado, let's get going. They don't exist in D&D lore. They're a brand new type of vampire completely different from the true vampires of 5e. So the only things we know are in the game and I'll go over them in this video. I'll present each heading and then include relevant clips to it. I hope you enjoy. 1. They are no longer undead and are alive with a heartbeat and a reflection. You can hear nothing but the drip of blood and the pounding of your newly reborn heart. Still, though, a living vampire. Hmm. Walking in the light as living vampires. And alongside them, he will enjoy the luxuries of the living. The arousals and appetites of man will return to him. In their blood, I shall be reborn. The ritual gave me back my reflection. Two, they can be in the sunlight. He will have no need of a parasite to protect him from the sun. He'll walk in the sun. I could get rid of the worm in my head and still walk in the sun. Freedom to live a real life in the sun. No temple required. Free to walk in the sun's rays. It grants my kind the freedom to walk in the sun. Three. No more bloodthirst. I'd finally be free of the hunger. He'll be free of the hunger. Free from sanguinary hunger. Freedom from the hunger. Be free of our hunger. For the first time since you can remember, the gnawing pain in your stomach is gone. I can't feel it. That ache in my stomach, that hunger, it's gone. Four, vampiric strengths greatly amplified. All the strengths of his vampiric form will be amplified. You can feel new strength in your body, a new power at your fingertips. And accrue all manner of powers. He'll wield power no vampire has ever possessed. And free to crush any who stand against me with merciless power. I'm imbued with unfathomable new talents. I'm fairly certain I can extend Mephistopheles' blessings unto you. I think my instincts have become so quick that the world around me can't catch up. Everything is moving at a grinding pace. I feel like I will live thousands of hours every day. Five new abilities we see in game. Bat form, mist form, ascendant bite, Ability to call creatures of the night. Ability to create new spawn. I can hear it at last. How oh, all the lowly creatures of this plane are begging to serve. Scurrying footpads in their safe houses. Rats below our feet in their filthy holes. The crows in the night above. They will. Obey. You probably expect me to turn into a sea of mist, run wrong side up on roofs, and to call on legions of wolves in battle. This will all happen in due time.
As the vampire ascendant, I can grant my lover immortality and bind them to me forever. Six, he is still himself. Confirmed by lead writer, he didn't lose his soul or become a different being or person. Vampires have souls in the world, BG3, regardless of D&D lore. This is how Astarian is able to sacrifice Kassador's soul in the ritual. From the lead writer in a recent IGN interview, link in the description. So with Astarian, his evil ending is actually him. Much of what he does is out of fear. And as a player, you can say to him, you're right to be afraid. And that sends him to a really horrible place, and I think it's really powerful. 7. Astarian is not bound to Mephistopheles. He did not sell his soul. Mephistopheles has made a new monster, not bound a creature to his will. The right was honored. The sacrifice is over. Eight, what the ritual entails. This is the rite of profane ascension, attempted only once in legend. 7,000 souls, each bearing the scar of the one who brought them to me, stand ready to be sacrificed. All it requires is the sacrifice of a few souls. Souls by scars that look exactly like mine. Carved into that ivory skin of yours is one part of an infernal contract between the archdevil Mephistopheles and your former master, Kazador Zar. In full. The contract states that Kazador will be granted knowledge of an infernal ritual so vile it has never been performed. The rite of profane ascension. It promises to be a marvelous ceremony, very elaborate, incredibly ancient, and entirely diabolical. If he completes the rite, he will become a new kind of being, the Vampire Ascendant. But the ritual has its price. As all worthwhile things do, Lord Gazador will need to sacrifice a number of souls, including all of his vampiric spawn, if he is to ascend. Nine. Document found in Cazador's bedroom. Unfurling the scroll reveals a list of foul rites and rituals, detailing all the ways death can be turned to one's advantage, or simply made more interesting. The rite of perfect slaughter, the liturgy of the dead, the sacrament of the damned, and many more strange, accursed rituals cover the parchment. The final entry, however, is familiar. The rite of profane ascension. O oh, piteous dead, O oh, ravenous dead, Immortality is your gift, but darkness is your prison, and hunger its jailer. The rite of profane ascension will release you. Walk in the sun, suffer not from hunger. Grow your power beyond anything you imagine. A pact has been made with the Lord of Hellfire. Deliver unto him seven thousand souls, each bearing an infernal mark, and you shall be free of your chains. You shall know true power. Deliver the souls, speak the words. Ecce Dominus, pas animas ofero in sacrificio, nunc volo porestatum quam policitus es mihi. And there you have it, folks. That's everything I was able to find in the game regarding ascended vampires. Of course, this is Baldur's Gate 3. I probably have missed a few things, so if there's anything you've seen that I didn't include, please let me know in the comments. And also, let me know if you enjoyed this video. I may do more like it in the future. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video. Until next time.